We welcome now uh, Flavia Coccioletti. Flavia, Flavia Coccioletti um, lives in Rome. She studied at the Fine Arts Academy, where she graduated from in 2022 in art education and communication. She is currently a doctoral student at the Rome Academy with a project fo focused on museum accessibility for the blind. So we welcome you and we, we are really happy to, to listen. Um, so I was saying, uh, I'm almost at the end of my first year of research and the initial project that I uh, submitted, submitted for the doctoral call was uh, focused on how new media intended both as social network and website and uh, as real technologies uh, can improve the fruition of art for blind and visually impaired people. Um, just uh, as I was writing my, my project, ICOM, that is an acronym for um, International Council of Museums, uh, updated its definition, added two very important words in it that are accessible and inclusive. So I'm going to read the new definition that is dated August 2022. Uh, a museum is a not-for-profit permanent institution in the service of society that researches, collects, conserves, interprets and exhibits tangible and intangible heritage. Open to the public, accessible and inclusive, museums foster diversity and sustainability. They operate and communicate ethically, professionally and with the participation of communities offering varied experience for education, enjoyment, reflection, and knowledge sharing. So, as you can see um, in this uh, uh, definition, the two words, accessible and inclusive, are very, very important. And it's like a, a very new thing for uh, the museums. Uh, but now, uh, let's look uh, more specifically at what at what accessibility means. Uh, I'm starting by saying that the word accessibility is a word that changed its definition uh, in the, by the context in which it is used. But in general, uh, a place or, or object or a technology is accessible when it can be easily used by everyone, including people with disabilities, whether permanent or temporary. Um, at this point, someone of you can like interrupt me and blame me for talking about like very obvious things. But in reality, uh, there is not that obvious because uh, the situation and the condition of accessibility in Italy and all around the world, it's almost dramatic. So I'm going to show you some data for make you understand better the situation. The 15% of the world population has a disability, and if we consider temporary disability, we reach the 20%. So it's a very high percentage. In Italy, the 5.2% of the population has a disability. You can say 5 is a very small number, but the 5% for a population like the Italian one, it's a very high percentage. Um, 215 million of people have severe visual impairment. I'm working with blind and um, visually impaired people, so uh, I, like, I stressed out uh, this, um, this data. Uh, considering these numbers that I'm showing you, it's even more severe that uh, <laughs> 98% of the websites in the world are not accessible. So just the 2% of the website are accessible. Of course, that, that data includes all, also museum websites. Talking about uh, Italian museum, uh, only the 8% of Italian museums provide path and usability aids for blind and visually impaired people 
such as tactile orientation maps or maps with relief drawings and things like that, but just the 8%. And only the 10% of the Italian museums provide an assistant to accompany people with visual, cognitive and communication disability during the visit. So, as you, as you can understand, it's a very dramatic situation. Um, okay. But uh, before I, um, I start to talk about the research that I have actually carried out in this year, uh, I feel that it's important to open a small parenthesis for show you the differences between blindness and low vision because um, they are uh, often used um, as the synonym of one of another, but uh, in, in reality they are two very different things. We talk about um, blindness for those people who suffer from a total lack of vision in both eyes or have only the perception of shadow and light in the better eye. But uh, on the other hand, uh, we talk uh, about low vision uh, with people that have only um, a small um, residual visual field in both eyes, uh, in less than 60% in the mild form and 30% in the more severe form. So um, just to make you understand the, the differences. And now that I make this little but important digression, uh, I will uh, present uh, um, a little summary of my research that I've been carrying um, out for uh, the past eight months. So I started in December 2022 uh, with um, uh, investigating the topics of blindness and low vision and consequently by seeking out and making contact with the association and companies that are active in the field of accessibility for blind people. Um, then uh, I proceeded uh, with a field investigation to frame the situation of museum accessibility in Italy to understand uh, where we are, uh, what methodologies are applied and what and how much technology is used to support accessibility. Uh, I personally visited several museums uh, throughout most of the country and I met with the people that are involved in the uh, public engagement office or accessibility office to um, understand uh, for the, the situation. Um, at the same time, uh, I've uh, been investigating existing technologies that are uh, now available to uh, facilitate the lives uh, of people with visual impairments. And uh, again, I've made, and I'm making uh, like now in this period, uh, contacts with realities that deal with these technologies such as web accessibility or assistive technologies and things like that that like are in this uh, technological field. Uh, for concluding my um, presentation, I wanted to um, present you uh, three examples of museum, of Italian museums that for me stands out for uh, their work in the uh, field of accessibility. Uh, I want to uh, stress that they are not the only museums that do a great job in this field in Italy, but I choose um, only three of them because <laughs> instead I would make like a uh, longer, longer, longer presentation. And Per caso ci sono i Musei Vaticani, ma già ho, <laughs> ho parlato con... <laughs> so, the first museum is Museo Omero uh, in Ancona. Uh, Museo Omero in Ancona is, I'm going to read for, for not uh, make errors, is the only state-run tactile museum in Italy, the only. Maybe also in Europe, but I don't want to 
to make an error. Uh, it is, was founded in 1993 by two blind people, Aldo Grassini and Daniela Bottegoni. And these museums aim to um, be a cultural space without barriers in which the prohibition to touch that we have in all the museums by the first day that they was, were invented um, could be abolished completely. In fact, in Museo Mero, there are um, 200 plaster and resin copies of uh, masterpieces, architectural models, and original uh, contemporary sculpture, which, which can be touched completely. So you can touch, like, <laughs> all you can see in this room, it's touchable. It's not original, but it's touchable. Possiamo andare avanti. The second museum I'm going to present is the Peggy Guggenheim Collection in Venice. Uh, this is a house museum of the woman collector Peggy Guggenheim, uh, in which they, there are like all the masterpieces uh, the, from her private collection. Um, in 2000, 2015, um, the Peggy Guggenheim Collection um, set up Doppio Senso, in English Double Sense, that is a project uh, uh, with which the museum intend to make its artistic heritage accessible to all blind, visually impaired and sighted people also, because accessibility means not only um, include people with disability, but all the people, even people sided, of course. And um, thanks to this project, um, there is a route in the museum that allows the visitor to get to know the work's art through touch with these uh, tactile devices that you can see in the photo. And um, also, um, Ah, okay, yes. Um, their tackle tour uh, foresee the possibility to touch some of the sculpture from uh, Alberto Giacometti that are displayed in the garden. So uh, if you go uh, on Peggy Guggenheim collection in the days in which there is doppio senso, you can touch the real sculpture of uh, Giacometti that is like a very important privilege for for all of us, I imagine. Uh, the last but not the least museum that I'm going to talk about is, of course, Vatican Museum. They need, of course, no introduction. They are probably the most famous museum in all the world with like uh, seven million visitors every year. Uh, despite these numbers, they uh, offer guided tactile exploration tour um, with the possibility to touch original sculptures and artifacts. So you can go in one of the museums that have the most famous collection in the world and touch original artifacts and sculptures. Um, the accessibility office is uh, headed um, by accessibility expert Isabella Salandri, that is a very passionate worker. And she and her team and all the staff of Vatican Museums offer a very, very important privilege uh, for uh, disabled people, visually impaired people, but also for us that can, we can have the possibility to touch such an amazing collection. Um, I have concluded. Thanks for your attention. And Thank you. Ah, non so se ci sono delle domande. Sì. I know your work is in progress, so it's just a curiosity of mine. I'm sure you will touch this point in at a later stage. But the solution for the uh, comprehension not just tactile, but also enhancing through the light, the images. There are some examples in this sector. 
Sì, sì. Sì, non so se posso rispondere in italiano, forse è più facile per me. Sì, no, 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 ok. Um, so, um, I stressed out the differences between blindness and low vision because it is important to, co to comprehend that uh, low vi people that suffer from low vision have a small residual visual field. So, they can see like very um, l light colors. Uh, so there are uh, different solutions for total blind people and low vision people um, in which we can include also like uh, something with light or something with very colorful things. Uh, in fact, uh, the tactile uh, uh, devices that uh, I was showing before with Peggy Gunam collection, uh, there is another um, company in Italy that make the same tactile devices but with original color of the artworks. So um, for blind people, it changed nothing, but for low vision people, uh, it, changed ev it changed everything because they can uh, like yeah associate the true colors of what they are touching maybe with like uh, avvicinano molto la, la tavoletta all'occhio e riescono a comprendere appunto i colori yeah through tactile and to yeah through light yeah 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 it is very important uh, because uh, nowadays, mm, like all the tactile devices are all white or black, but we have to understand that are very small kind of visual impairments that all difference one another. So we have to think uh, one solution, but that can include all these uh, impairments. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the profile. Yeah. Low vision, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. She's my tutor, so. <laughs> you have a question? Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if, like, usually the solutions are always tactile or if there are also other solutions. Because I was in a museum in the Netherlands and they work with all the, all the senses. They had, like, smells to artworks or uh, sounds. So. Of course, the most uh, there are a lot of tactile devices, uh, but uh, it is very important to like uh, develop all the senses with people that have uh, impairments, like visual impairments. Uh, in fact, I was like um, some months ago at uh, Museo Madre in Naples, that is one of the most important uh, contemporary museum in Naples. And they, uh, they, uh, they had a project in which for uh, mm, let to uh, know the, their collection to visually impaired people, uh, they presented um, the, the artworks for uh, which one for one senses. So one with sound, what with um, olfato, I, I, I'm, now I miss smell, of course and the other one with the uh, tactile. So it is very important to um, enlarge the, the field, not just for the, the touch, but all the other senses, of course. In a few words, uh, two little questions and two little suggestions. I have not uh, understood the meaning 
of real technology and of ICOM terms, then uh, I think uh, you must pay attention to statistical data as, as you are carrying out the research. And when uh, you say that 15% in the world are uh, disabled people, uh, it is difficult to say that uh, only 5% in Italy are disabled people. It seems that we are better and super, but <laughs> I don't think so, not at all. So perhaps uh, there are uh, different uh, sources or they take into consideration different kind of disabilities. And then I know, I'm, uh, I'm sorry I don't, uh, I don't remember the name, but there are uh, some uh, little association uh, of uh, young people like you that are... Uh, involved in carrying out audio description with great empathy effect to describe artworks to, to, to visually impaired people. And I think if you research, you can find them easily. Okay. Um. ICOM is International Council of Museum. Okay. Um, oh, il professore è italiano, però continuerò a rispondere in inglese. Um, they often um, change and update the definition of museum in general, and last year they added these two important words that seems to me like uh, fundamental because... Um, it's very important, you, you know better than anyone, to talk about accessibility. Uh, and finally, the word accessible, it was added to the, the definition. Uh, for real technology, mi sono accorta che non si capiva quando ho già mandato il PDF, lo so che non aveva senso. Intendevo proprio la differenza tra la tecnologia che è sul web, quindi eh, Instagram, Facebook e, e siti web e poi le tecnologie invece più concrete tipo le audioguide o eh, che ne so, la, la penna che legge le etichette per le persone non vedenti. Esatto, ok, grazie. Sì, non, eh, infatti lo sapevo che era un po' forbiante come, come parola. Comunque grazie dei consigli. Thank, thank you for the suggestion.